Hello, I'm Tony DeMari, the editor of Jack, here with the highlights of the November 20th issue of the journal. We have an intriguing paper in this issue of Jack that deals with the effect of age upon the relative benefit of coronary bypass surgery versus percutaneous intervention in patients with coronary artery disease. And the data comes from 10 randomized clinical trials that compared cabbage and PCI uh, in, in, in patients. And they were able to gather 7,800 patients, and they divided them into turkey tiles of age, and then they express the results as the hazard ratio of cabbage versus PCI. And what they found was that in patients who were 56 years of age or younger, that this ratio was 1.2 actually favoring uh, uh, PCI. However, in the oldest turtile, that is patients over the age of 65, the ratio was 0.79 clearly favoring uh, uh, cabbage versus uh, PCI. So I intriguing data that would suggest that the younger you are, uh, the better your hazard ratio uh, in terms of an endpoint of death if you get PCI, where the older you are, uh, you might do a bit better with cabbage. And lots of caveats about this study. Most importantly, they only utilize bare metal stents, and in addition to that, that they had very few patients over the age of 75, a common coronary uh, risk age group. Nevertheless, some, some intriguing results that, that place age as an important uh, potential determinant of the appropriate therapy for coronary artery disease. Data regarding the ability of arterial wave reflection analysis to predict the appearance of cardiovascular events or congestive heart failure in individuals has been relatively mixed. And so to try to answer this question definitively, investigators from the MESA trial, that's the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis, studied some 5,900 patients who at the time of enrollment had no evidence of heart disease whatsoever. And they then performed radial artery tonometry and what they did in this analysis that was a bit different was to divide the arterial wave reflections into forward reflections and backward reflections. And so they looked at three separate criteria, the reflection magnitude, uh, the uh, arterial uh, augmentation index, and pulse pressure amplification. And what they found was that each of these uh, criteria were indeed predictive of the appearance of cardiovascular events in these patients who were followed for over seven years. But most importantly, the reflection magnitude was very, very predictive of the appearance of congestive heart failure. So radial arter artery tonometry is uh, non-invasive, relatively easily performed, and these data from MESA suggest that uh, these measurements can be of significant value in identifying patients who have a high risk of, of uh, going on to develop either cardiovascular events, but especially congestive heart failure uh, over the period of the next five to seven years. We have another manuscript in this issue of Jack from the Mesa investigators, in this case reporting on the effect of air pollution upon cardiovascular disease. And what the Mesa investigators did was look at some 3,000 patients over a period uh, of two years. And what they were particularly anxious to analyze was the effect of particulate matter, very fine particulate matter, less than 2.5 micron in diameter upon flow-mediated dilation and brachial artery diameter as, as evidence of uh, endothelial dysfunction. And there had been some com uh, confused data in terms of the effect of air pollution, with some data suggesting Thing that there was decreased brachial artery diameter indicative of increased sympathetic tone and a great deal of data suggesting that there was impaired flow-mediated dilation suggesting a role of impaired uh, endothelial function. 
Uh, now, these investigators looked at the long-term effects of this particulate material, uh, and the way they assessed the particulate material uh, was to, in, in general, look at air quality indices from the geographic areas of the individuals who were studied. And the bottom line was, in fact, what they observed was a relationship between exposure to particulate material of this magnitude and reduced flow-mediated dilation. This was particularly prevalent in women, in, in young individuals, non-smokers, and for some reason in hypertensives. So these data do suggest that long-term exposure to uh, air pollution with fine particulate material can cause impaired endothelial uh, function, and that impaired function may indeed be the mechanism by which air pollution increases uh, the incidence of cardiovascular disease. The data are imprecise uh, in terms of, of uh, reflecting the magnitude of particulate material, uh, but nevertheless, uh, some a strong indication of the mechanism by which air pollution is detrimental. So I think, again, we have some interesting articles in this issue of Jack, and I hope you enjoy reading them. For Inside Jack, I'm Tony DeMaria.